Today we're going to be doing a 200 hour service on a RockShox Super Deluxe rear shock. Um, going to be working on the air can and the damper. Technically the air can on this one was already worked on. I couldn't get the kit in time for the damper. They just happened to show up a few days ago and I figured why not. Let's just do the whole thing and I will be doing a tutorial step by step uh, in order to uh, maybe make this job a little bit easier for some people out there. All right. So for starters, you're going to be needing a service kit, a 200 hour service kit. The service kit comes with all the seals, oils, grease, and small pieces like um, uh, Schrader valves uh, for, and also the bushings actually for the act to, uh, to put into the eye holes, um, the eyelets of the, the, the shock in a kit. Uh, I highly recommend spreading everything out evenly and nicely in order to match up seals that you pull out immediately and replace them immediately as opposed to taking out everything from the shock basically and then you know potentially forgetting what needs to go back in there so just deal with it one by one it makes life a little bit easier in my opinion at least for me so these are some of the tools that you will be needing for the job for starters you're going to need a vise, without a doubt. A vise is absolute, pretty much a necessity for this job. It makes life a lot easier. You're going to need soft jaws for the vise, preferably a soft jaw that has a half-inch hole pre-built, or, you know, you don't absolutely need that. You can go with just flat soft jaws and figure that one out, actually. So, uh, wrenches. You're going to need a 31 millimeter wrench. This Rock Shock wrench happens to come with a crow foot built in, basically, so you can torque it down and a 19 millimeter wrench with a 19 millimeter crow foot i highly recommend torquing things down to the recommended values uh, that rock shock puts in their specs you could easily strip uh the the metal or put too much stress on the metal <clears throat> on the threads if you don't torque it appropriately you are going to need a screwdriver with a t10 bit on it and i highly recommend having a magnetic driver the screw that goes at the end of this bit, you want it to stay. It's going to go in a pretty weird spot. You will not be able to use your finger to keep it uh, to keep it uh, um, on the tip. So uh, you definitely want one that's magnetic. It's going to make your life a lot easier. You are going to need a pick. Um, another thing that comes in handy is a pick with a flat head. There's a couple of uh, uh, seals that are real small and go in a real tight place. And this is gonna help you sort of sink it into the hole where it needs to go. Not a necessity, but it definitely helps. A Schrader valve remover, doesn't matter whose it is. We are going to need the air adapter in order to fill up the, uh, the piggyback basically. So there's a significant amount of air pressure that goes in there. And this is pretty much the only way we could get it done that I know of at least. A ratchet with a 12 millimeter socket. Uh, might need pliers you don't need this particular tool uh, this measures the depth that you insert the IFP the internal floating piston uh, you can do that with calipers this this is the first time I'm going to try this actually I'm going to see if it's going to make life a little bit easier as far as just putting it in as opposed to dealing with calipers and trying to put the IFP into its uh, uh, appropriate location so appropriate depth this tool you don't really need i just bought this tool uh basically it's an ifp removal when you take out a remover when you take out the bleed screw you screw this in and it should help supposedly make it a little bit easier to take out the ifp um make it a little bit safer i don't know we'll find out but this is not a necessity you're going to need a shock pump to well pump it all back up to pump the air can back up when you're done seven weight oil Absolutely going to need seven weight oil, and I highly recommend doing uh, using uh, 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 latex gloves. Uh, this is a messy job, without a doubt, uh, and uh, I highly recommend wearing an apron, glasses, or putting or using safety glasses. There's a point where oil might squirt out, basically all over you, and you don't know where it's going to land. You're going to need an oil pan, basically. So I use two of them. One, I pour the oil first in here. Uh, so I can see the condition of the oil just out of curiosity more than anything but then underneath the vise I put an oil pan because uh, there's gonna be a lot of oil like I said this is a messy job uh, I'm gonna try and do it as clean as I possibly can but uh, it definitely gets messy so um, another thing you're going to need is rags you're definitely gonna need rags dirty rags rags that you're gonna toss out right so alcohol highly recommended dynamic grease that's gonna come with your seal kit 
1550 uh 15 w50 oil that's going to come with your seal kit um might need loctite and that's pretty much everything that you're going to be needing for this job so this particular shock over here is a trunnion mount i don't have to worry about moving bushes on the eyelets on top and the um the bottom portion of it uh, my eyelets don't, my bushings don't stick out to a point where I won't be able to remove the canister. Uh, if you happen to have a shock where you need to remove the bushings, there is a tool. You can do it without the tool, but there is a tool that makes it a lot easier and a lot safer. You won't destroy it. Uh, here, I have the tool right here. Rock shock makes one, Fox makes one basically, and essentially you just, you know, take this out. It's, a, it's, it's essentially a bearing pusher more than anything right a bearing remover a bearing installer and uh you just put it in the vise and it'll squeeze out the bushings and then you can squeeze them back in within the vise when you're all done but like i said i will not be needing this for this particular service so the first thing we're going to be doing is removing the air cap and writing down the air pressure that is in the air can right now so we can remember it for later and right now this one is about 160 that seems a little low actually uh, 160 psi on this one all right so after we're done with that uh -huh. we will click or count the clicks going counterclockwise on the rebound so we remember to put it back where it was so in this case one two three four five four clicks from the end and we'll just leave it at the end we need to make sure that the shock stays in the open position right so you got open this is an rc3 so you got open uh mid and close basically we're just going to leave it open we're then going to take out this o-ring we will leave this on the side this is your uh um, your measurement ring as far as your sag your sag ring i should say right so we will then Take out the air slowly. Don't go too crazy on this one. From the actual shaft. There we go. All right. So next we will be removing the Schrader valve using the Schrader valve removal tool. As this comes out, there might be a little bit of air that hisses out. Nope, we are good to go. Put that on the side. Now we want to remove the air can. Uh, I would put a little bit of a, a towel at the bottom of the eyelet at the air can because there might be a little bit of air in here and it might force it off. It actually might come off as a projectile. So that towel will help slow it down. So basically just twist the air can off as we turn it. There we go. All right. As it loosens up, keep a hold on it as we pull it out. because it might want to pop. There we go. There we go. And this guy's up. So, pull out the air can. We will put the air can on the side. Uh, well, I forgot the name of this thing over here, uh, but we will pull this out and we will put this on the side. All right, so basically, we will be servicing the air can, which is real simple, right? It's just a question of well, cleaning and lubing, uh, adding new seals and uh, lubing the seals, basically. The damper, uh, first we have to remove the oil. Uh, then we will take the whole thing apart, change the seals. The tricky seals are the ones inside here and the one inside at the bottom over there. So um, the rest of the seals are actually pretty easy. These seals over here are part of the 50 hour service. So there's a 50 hour service which includes all the seals for the air can and the seals for the shaft on the outside of the shaft. Plus the seal, there's one seal that sort of connects that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, <clears throat> creates a more solid connection for lack of a better term of the air can to the head body over here, right? Uh, highly recommend doing those 50 hours. It is amazing how much it helps uh, with uh, slow bump sensitivity basically. 
Uh, but the 200 hours, a world of difference. I mean, I can honestly say that, you know, um, your shock definitely degrades over time. There's no questions asked, and a 200 hour definitely helps. One, air gets on the inside, the seals wear, and essentially allows air to mix in with the oil, and it turns everything into a big foamy mess. Um, and your shock just won't dampen the way it should. So that's why we are doing this job. I'm just glad the kit came in. All right, let's start with the air can. What sucks is I already did this air can technically about three weeks ago, but I'm going to take things apart just to show you guys um, which seals need to be changed, uh, how to grease them, and insert them back in, right? So one on the top of the air can over here, there's this little seal, and I'm going to be super careful because I'm going to use the same seals. These are brand new seals, literally, right? And then we remove the protector seal from the shaft, which I'm probably gonna destroy, Jesus. Oh, sort of sucks, I wish it came in all one shot. All right, that's still pretty good, right? So we move that protector seal, and then we have essentially a white split ring, right? You can see it's split right there. This is not good, I should not be doing this. But I figure, why not? I'd rather save the seals because these kits are getting expensive, to say the least. So we got the split ring, and then underneath the split ring, we have a rubber washer, or a rubber seal, basically, right? So that's it, essentially. You clean the air can. This one's already been cleaned. It's already been oiled, basically, right? So then what we do is we take... After you've cleaned it, take some alcohol to it. Make sure you get all little nooks and crannies. Inside here, be very careful. Put extra effort in this area because dirt tends to collect in there. You want to get all the dirt out. So I would try and clean it from both ways, from here and from here using your finger. If not using, I don't want to say a metal pick because you might scratch the inside. You do not want to scratch the inside. You want to be delicate on the inside. Um, but something that could get in, fold paper over and get into these little nooks and crannies on the inside basically and clean them all out, right? So then when it comes to reinstalling stuff, you make sure you put some dynamic grease on everything, right? Lube it up real well. Grease is good, all right? And then we insert this guy back into its spot. Again, there is a uh, indented area in here uh, that the rubber seal will go into a little bit tricky a little bit slippery actually All right but once you get it in there it goes in there and then so you put this guy in first right and then you put the slip ring on the inside of it make sure that the slip ring is properly aligned you do not want to align let's see you do not want to misalign it, so you do not want to put it in this way. It needs to be inserted appropriately, or else you got problems, right? So this is a little bit tricky. Great. This thing is slipping everywhere. Oh, get in there. There we go. Now you got to make sure he is seated appropriately, right? So this guy is seated in there. Both of them are seated. The split ring goes first and the seal, the seal goes in back of it, right? And then we take this guy over here, put a little grease on him. A little grease doesn't hurt. Put him all the way around. Okay. And you pop him into his spot over here. Be careful. You don't want to dent it. There we go. All right. So now put your finger around it. Good to put just a little bit of seal all the way around the outside of this thing. Just spread it nicely and evenly across the outside, just like that. All right. Perfect. So we got the outer seal. Just lube it a little bit, and then we place this guy around here be careful don't overstretch him he should fit nice and easily on the outside okay so that takes care of the air can i'm going to put the air can on the side now for the 50 hour service again <clears throat> we have these two split rings and this seal over here right so first 
we will work off we will remove I should say where is it well I can't see it man I swear I need glasses anyway I see this one make sure you do not damage or scratch the shaft when doing this right so there we go and the last split thing and there we go cool right so again you would clean all this right clean it all well and then you put new ones back on these are brand new so i'm just going to put them back on right now right no need to uh well no need to waste them so you'll notice that the split rings are different sizes right one's a little bit thicker than the other one the thicker one goes closer to the head of the damper shaft right so then we make sure that's on there just like that looks like i stretched it it sucks then we put on the seal boy i really did stretch it that really sucks oh well and then on the outside close to the bottom of the shaft we put the thinner split ring Obviously not like that. Fingers are slipping everywhere. Mm. There we go. Now that I'm going to have to watch out for. Because that stretched a little bit too much. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. Uh, and the last thing to service in the 50 hour. Right. Is. This is actually a travel limiter. Um. Yeah. This shock is a 185 by 50. Technically, it's a 185 by 55. It belongs to an Evo Calling. And essentially, they take a 155 and they put a travel limiter, a 5 millimeter travel limiter that converts it to a 150. Technically, the bike can be ridden as a 155, which would be, I believe, 143 millimeter travel as opposed to the 130, 131 millimeter travel. Um, I just leave it stock. So uh again over here there's another o-ring on the inside i really don't want to mess with this one well, i guess i should show you guys so there's an o-ring on the inside over here right as you can see it hopefully i don't know it's probably too dark essentially you remove that o-ring and you replace it grease it and replace it right i have one token in here i'm gonna leave the token in no need for me to remove the token at the moment and uh we will move on to the damper service actually well i mean once you're all done again you're going to close it all back up you're going to insert the air can over the shaft first you're going to put half this pouch of basically one ounce of uh the two ounce pouch of 15 uh, w50 air can oil right and you're going to spread around the inside as you see i already have a bunch uh and when you put this in and you pass the seal head over here you are going to put the remainder of that one ounce on the top side of the can. So this way, both sides of the can, the seal head sort of splits both sides of the can. Essentially, you want both sides to have, uh, you want one ounce of 15W50 oil on each side of the can. And again, I'm going to put the can to the side and we will move on to the damper service. All right, let's start servicing the damper. So the first thing we are going to do is take the Schrader valve tool and remove this plastic plug. Okay, you definitely need a Schrader valve tool to remove it. And underneath this plug, oh, come on. Hmm. Come on, dummy. Ooh, that shouldn't have happened. At least not like that. That is not a good sign. So, this cap, put the cap on the side. Do not lose the cap, even though there is a replacement, but you never know, All right? So now, that did not sound good at all. Well, a lot of air came out. There might be more air in here. So basically, there's an IFP in here, an internal floating piston. Oil starts, oil fills up for the majority of the damper all the way down. You have a bleed screw here and you have another bleed screw on top of the IFP. But there's high pressure air 
on uh, between the IFP and the end of the piggyback canister, the canister. Um, now, Fox and Rock Shocks use, technically they use nitrogen, but there is zero issue using regular air. I mean, let's face it, air is like what, 79% nitrogen anyway. So uh, ask Rock Shocks, they say no problem at all. Ask Box, they say no problem at all, even though they recommend nitrogen, that's because they do it. Basically, they want to service it on their own. They want you to pay 200 bucks to serve this stuff where you could do it on your own. Uh, in fact, that's sort of like working on Rock Shocks more because they give you valves as opposed to those stupid pellets where you need a needle with a fox. I can't stand those things. So anyway, um, we are going to use the pick and we are going to remove any remainder air that might be in there. Hmm. Yeah, nothing in there. So now we will be removing the Trader Ralph. And here we have the Schrader valve. We will put the Schrader valve on the side as well. So now we need to open a canister. In order to do that, we have to press down. On, oops, I pressed down too much. That sucks. Well, when we press them down, it's going to expose a ring over here and we want to use a pick very carefully I need to get a solid plastic pick really but what you're going to want to do is get underneath it and pull this guy out there we go once you get him out so put the ring on the side right so now we have the ifp on the inside there is a hook that we could use i mean the ifp the head over here we want to be delicate with this guy when we pull him out. There we go. All right. So this guy has a seal on the outside. We will be needing to change. Okay. And that is the IFP. And inside there is the actual bleed screw right there. Okay. Underneath there, it's all oil, basically oil for the whole shaft. So next step so let's start off with removing the o-ring and cleaning this because you can see there's actual dirt that <laughs> amazingly manages to creep its way in sometimes i'm blown away by how dirt could get into every nook and cranny even though you think it's all sealed this guy's a little bit tricky come on there we go so remove this guy then we match him in the reservoir IFP kit, it has two O rings. They're pretty much identical, right? So here's the old one. We will take a new one. We will put dynamic grease on them. Oops. Around. Let's take this guy and clean him up real well. Hold on. Grab some alcohol. It's another thing you're gonna need is alcohol. You definitely wanna clean everything with alcohol. Try not to get alcohol on raw O-rings. Right. Bend, bunch up some paper towel and Basically, clean the inside where the o ring sits and make sure no dirt is inside this thing or stuck around any of the edges. You want this to be as clean as possible. If you want it all to be as clean as possible. All right, so now we take our greased o ring. Right. And we put them back on. All right, so this guy is officially done. Now, we need to remove the can. So, uh, in order to do this, we are going to need a 31 millimeter wrench, that shock, rock shocks wrench. I need a bigger vise, is what I need 
Technically, I should be using a soft job, but I can't fit it in here, but it's up there. So, um, what we are going to want to do is loosen the can with a 31 millimeter wrench, basically, right? So just take them, put them in here, just slightly. Uh, screw them. There we go. <coughs> there we go. All right. So now we loosen them. Now, you could use an oil pan. Um, I like seeing what the oil looks like. So what we're going to do is remove this guy from the vise. Oops. And then we're going to remove. Eh, not enough to do it by hand. Damn it. Oh, boy, that does not sound good at all. Are too slippery. I can hear the grit in the threads. All right, so we are going to take out the can. Oil is going to come out, and that looks like absolute crap. That looks like total crap. To say the least, look at all the foam in there. That's not good. So, <clears throat> this desperately needed a rebuild, actually. So, let's try and get all the oil out of there for now, for as much as we can. So, let's put this guy on the side. So, we have over here these clean towels. So, now we are going to move the bleed screw. And the IFP. The IFP is this round thing. This little piston over here. So where is my... Oh yeah. It is over here. This is where the T10 comes in handy. Right now, it's not all that bad. But when it comes to putting this thing back in here with all the oil in it, you absolutely want a driver with a magnetic head and a strong magnetic head. So this is the bleed screw. Let's not lose this bleed screw. We will put it on the side. All right, so then we have the IFP, and let's try this new tool. Supposedly, this thing screws in here. Does it really matter what's that? And Not really needed but I think I did it backwards but ultimately it did work I mean it did push it out pretty easy so we have to change this seal this is a very important seal this actually keeps the air separated from the oil and the entire damper these wear out basically and allows air to get into the oil within the damper so let's put this tool aside All right so we want to take this guy out carefully we don't want to scratch anything all right, put them on the side. Then we want to clean this guy. Make sure there's absolutely no oil on him. Cannot believe how fast batteries drain on a GoPro Hero 10. And I have one of the new uh heavy duty or batteries whatever they call them all right that oh, looks clean clean enough so this is el new seal put a little bit of dynamic grease on this guy grease him up grease to keep him nice and lubed and 
stop any kind of well to help with sealing that's not like much moisture really collects inside the chamber like most people think it does and we take this guy and we put him back in his spot and the piston is now done so we have the can IFPs out there is a rubber seal and a plastic washer on the inside all right so we clean everything down with alcohol we replace the seal the washer we just clean it out as well and then we insert everything back in the way it should be uh, well the way it should be so uh, let me just clean this quick quick and I'll be back all right I'm back I cleaned out the canister make sure you clean uh, in the grooves on the inside and clean the threads real well right so then clean the plastic washer put the plastic washer in first it just goes in by hand falls into place put a little bit of dynamic seal just a little bit on this guy here the pain, but come on okay all right keep water out from the outside and then we just pop them in so now our canister is done so in the kit in the IFP kit we will have a new bleed screw with a new washer on it we will replace the old one and then there's also a little washer don't lose it it's real small and essentially it replaces the washer on the canister valve cover basically there's a little washer on here and we take the little washer out all right all right put him on the side let's just clean this guy up good make sure the threads are clean yep he's clean then we're going to put a little bit of dynamic seal on this guy here I always use the dynamic seal again it keeps the rubber moist and it helps with moisture all right come on man get on there all right nope there we not go would help fast to put underneath the camera there we go seat it all the way to the bottom so now we have a clean canister we have a new bleed screw actually let's put this one up new bleed screw clean the ifp put a new ring on it canister cover cleaned it real well put a new uh, o-ring on it and then we have the uh the uh clip the uh, seal clip so all that's done and ready to be put back together but now we have to take out the compression piston this guy could be somewhat finicky sometimes he could come out by hand this guy's got a spring underneath and a washer there we go all right so like i said be careful with this guy put him on the side all right let's try this again uh i literally just removed the damper uh took out the oil took out the shim only to realize the gopro wasn't on so uh right now this is empty inside but i'll explain the procedures real quick first we need to remove out the tamper we need to remove the damper tool that you're going to need a 19 millimeter wrench right so if you notice at the shaft there is a rounded portion over here. You're going to take the wrench. You're going to put it on the rounded side and you're going to crack it open. It's going to be a little bit stiff. This is torqued down to about 20 something Newton meters, I believe. Uh, and then you are, once it's loose, you're going to unscrew it by hand, right? And then pull it out. Be careful pulling it out. It will be filled with oil, basically, when you pull it out. And then you empty out the oil, put it on the side for now, right? So then we have the piston assembly. For the piston assembly to remove it we need to remove it in order to be able to get to the seal that's inside this uh, uh, uh can piston assembly or this piston within the can uh the air can take the body 
just put it nicely, not too tight, in a vise, basically, right? And then we take a zip tie, right? Take the zip tie, you were gonna put it in this hole, right? And ultimately remove this screw. This can be a little bit tight as well. You're gonna have to crack it open. Like I said, I already did this without realizing the GoPro wasn't on. And then when the screw is out, you're gonna lift the entire assembly from the shaft up into, onto the tie wrap and then pull out the whole shim assembly. You, don't, you do not want this to fall apart. It's actually falling apart on me because um, then you're gonna have to figure out the shim stack order and you have to be careful because there could be shims like this one on the inside of uh, this cap over here, right? So when you're all said and done, you can just leave it on the side like that, or you could basically close it in order to secure it, right? Now, for those that want to regularly uh, service their shocks and they keep their bikes over a long period of time, uh, what you can do is be very careful when this thing is inside and assembled on the shaft, right? You basically remove the screw and then one by one, you remove each shim, shim each shim, each uh, the, the, the check plate, the piston, so on and so forth, and you place them next to each other in the order that you remove them. But you got to be really careful because these things are so fine, so thin. We're talking about a thousandth of an inch on most of them. Um, and they stick together. They seem, they feel, they look and feel like they're, they're, they're one shim, but the reality is they could be two and three shims stuck together, right? So you really got to be careful doing it. And then what you can do is just measure the depth of each shim and the diameter of each shim with a caliper, uh, or a micrometer. And you could write that down. And ultimately if by accident, something happens in the future, you have a reference to go back to because there is no true standard for these shim stacks like for this one over here it's unique to this particular bike basically right so and you're not going to find that online rock Shox is not going to give it to you there's people in the country very few people in the country that know this information um so you don't want to mess with it if you don't really have to so again you just take it out one shot the whole thing you clip the zip tie make sure it's locked Last time I didn't lock it and it all exploded on me, right? And now it's secure. I mean, you can take, basically take that and put it on the side. So now we can remove this piston assembly, a little bit stuck. And inside here, there is a seal and we have to re replace that seal. It's very important to replace that seal actually. Um, so then we have a shim. Well, actually we got a bumper washer and a shim together. And then in this shock, your shocks might not have this. Most shocks probably don't. Uh, this has a limiter, basically. It's a travel limiter based on this bike. Uh, they limited the travel by five millimeters for this particular shock. So even though it's stated as a 150, it's technically a 155, this guy here, right? Then we have tokens. I only got one token over there. I don't need to remove it. And in here is another seal that you would remove. And I've already changed this, uh, so I'm not going to completely remove it. Ultimately, this is part of the 50-hour kit, this seal. So when you do your 50-hour kit, you have room to go in here uh, to actually remove it. You don't have to remove everything I just did for the 50-hour kit, right? Now, there is a seal on the inside of here that's a little bit tricky. And there is one over here on the inside over here at the edge that's a little bit tricky. Let's deal with the inner one first. So it's right in here. Now this one absolutely needs to get changed. There we go. So we will take this one out. And the other one is right over here. All right, we remove this guy. So both these guys need to be changed. Ultimately, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a cleaning. one side now we are going to open up this pack over here and figure out which one of these guys it's three small ones and then i'm going to save the two split rings and that rubber seal for my next 50 hours so this one's not it it's got to be this one, and these are the same, basically. So it's one of these guys. 
so we are going to take a little bit of dynamic seal Come on here real good and now we're going to try and stuff him back in here and this is where I was saying it comes in handy to have come on, come on, come on, a pick with a flat end to it so sort of like that yeah, so this guy's a pain in the butt There. And he's in. Yay. Let's put some dynamic seal on this guy. And rub him on the inside well. There we go. Let's get him real good. All right. Now let's find the replacement seal for this little guy on the inside. He is not in this pack. This is the old one. Okay. And we will put this guy back in his spot. <coughs> Make sure he's tucked in all the way in there all the way around and we're good we are going to reassemble everything in this case i have a limiter a travel limiter so ultimately um that will go in in this case i believe it goes in that way yes um first in my case you're you might not have one of these things. Again, they tr they limit the travel of this particular shock for this particular bike by five millimeters, hence the the travel limiter, basically. Then I put the shim on top, the bumper, and then the piston. Now, with the piston, we have to make sure that the threads are facing upwards because the damper body is going to screw into it. So, threads facing upwards. Put that guy in, right? That's good to go. Now, because we have everything in our, our shim stack in a tie wrap, all we need to do is cut open the side of the tie wrap. Right, be careful it doesn't spring open on you. And then insert the tie wrap into the hole, into the body, the shaft body, right, all the way in. And then jiggle your shim stack. And ta-da! Screw the nut. Everything in order right then we got to tighten it down torque it down 12 millimeter socket it's going to be i believe 12 uh six something newton meters uh let me double check that 6.8 newton meters with 12 millimeter socket i highly recommend using torque wrench for this you could do it by hand but these again they're softer metals basically so they're easy to strip people don't realize it that they're not as precise as they think they are when you get a super precise torque wrench like this, you realize how unprecise your hands are no matter how many times you've done it, right? So we're going to take it, we're going to screw him down, tighten him down. We're going to bring him to 6.8. There we go. 6.8 newton meters. We are done. So our shim stack assembly is installed next we are going to put in the piston now for the piston we're going to want to put a little bit of grease on top because essentially the lever shock body lever is a cam and uh there's a cam back basically that allows you to lock out your shock and that presses down the piston right so and it blocks oil from going through so just put a little bit of grease over here where's my grease Actually, it's right here. How's about that? 
a little bit of dynamic grease in this little tube instead of the big one. Put a little bit on there. Not too much. There we go. Right? And we're going to take this guy and we're going to pop him in here. He's going to make a little popping noise when he goes in there. There you go. Right? And you can actually test. You'll feel it lift when you move the lever to lock out the shock basically that means it's all working everything's nice and connected right so then we will put in the piggyback body basically right we'll screw in by hand first this is very soft metal so you definitely want to do them by hand first don't go too crazy make sure he goes in by hand only at first until you can't do it by hand anymore right just to make sure that you're not cross threading Then we're going to slowly tighten him down with this guy until he's pretty hard. And then you're going to take a crow foot, or if you have this wrench, it's got a crow foot in it, and a torque wrench. And we are going to tight torque him down to 8 nanometers. There you go. Nope, that's 7.8. 8 nanometers. Perfect. So in this case, I put my torque wrench. Slowly apply, six, seven, oops. I really need to get a better friggin' vise. I just don't have room for a bigger vise. My problem is put this guy all the way out here. So stupid. Gonna give in and just do it. Get that out of the way, make my life easier. Okay, so let's do that again. And seven, and Eight on the nose, perfect. So now that's done. Next is the bleed process. For the bleed process, we are going to start off with, we're gonna need a driver, preferably one with a strong magnetic head for a T10 Torx bit, in order to hold the bleed screw. The stronger the magnet, the better, because uh, you're gonna be in an odd situation when trying to put in that screw the way I'm gonna bleed it. We're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench eventually, right? We are going to need, let me put the dynamic seal away, oil. In this case, we are going to be using RockShox's recommended Maxima Plush suspension fluid, high performance seven weighted oil, right? And what is mega handy is a rubber band and an additional latex glove. I thought I brought one out actually. There we go, we got an additional latex glove. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the oil canister. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a mess. All right, this whole job's a bit of a mess. We're gonna fill up the canister, or the can, right to the top, All right? So then we're gonna take the rubber glove we're going to put it over the canister and then we're going to take a rubber band make them nice and tight and seal the glove on the canister pull them down to make them nice and tight then we're going to use our finger to essentially bleed the inside of the top part of the shock right so what we're going to do is we're just going to apply pressure and essentially displace the air until oil comes out. Just do this nice and slow. And we're going to keep on doing this until we see a steady stream of oil. Right? And what we can do is move the lever up and down just in case. Right? Just to make sure there's no air trapped anywhere in that assembly. Right, so it's gonna make a bit of a mess. Let's just try and collect some of this oil. All right, and we keep on doing that. So then, once we see we have a steady stream of oil, in fact, we're gonna need a little bit more oil. What we're gonna do, we have a steady stream of oil. In fact, I'm gonna put a little bit more oil in here because we're gonna want that later. It's going to come in handy. Top it off just a little bit because the shock body obviously is going to eat, occupy some of that oil. Put this guy over here again. 
right. Okay. There we go. That's a fresh, right? There we go. Now we have a steady stream. We are going to block this hole. Okay. So now that the hole's blocked, you need to keep it blocked. Do not take your finger off that hole because gravity's going to want to balance everything and equalize pressure. And we're going to get air in the shaft. We do not want that. We want to keep the oil in the shaft. So then we have the piston. We're going to put the piston in flat side top, right? Now here you're going to want to watch out because of the oil that's going to want to squirt. You're going to first hear pop when it first goes in. There we go. Now we're going to want to put it in first about 20 millimeters just to start with, right? Just slowly but surely put it in there. Oil is going to want to pop out from the top. Cover it so it doesn't, basically. There we go. Right? Now, let's slowly put it in there. Mm -hmm. About 20 millimeters start with. It has a set depth of 31, I believe. I'll verify that. But we don't want to put it all the way in yet because we're going to use the piston to bleed the last process. So, we got the piston in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the assembly. from the, which make sure your finger's constantly on the hole, do not unclog it. Tap the shock, just to make sure there's no air in the canister. I'm gonna allow it to come off, or come out if there is. Okay, we're good. Then we're gonna take the bleed screw and block the hole. Okay. Now the hole's blocked, right? So now we can take our finger off because we got suction in here essentially, right? Gravity's not gonna wanna equalize it. So we put this on the side. And next, we work on the canister. So now we are going to take the damper body, put them in the vise. Come on, dummy. Come on. All right. I'm going to put them in the vise, just like that. Clamp them down good. He's nice and solid, right? Now we are going to fill this guy up with oil to the top. To the top, 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 top. In fact, overfill them a little bit. We want a lot of oil in here. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. So now to make myself feel comfortable, I'm just going to top off this guy just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to roll the assembly, the top part of the shock, onto the damper body, right? And you're going to want to roll it, basically. Do not hold it by the shaft. Hold it from the top. And we're going to take this guy. And we are going to just roll them in here, just like that. And we are going to put them in just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so my camera overheated, believe it or not, at 1080, 24 frames a second. GoPro Hero 10. What in God's name? I swear to God, that's just crazy. Anyway, so basically, what I'm going to do now is take the piston and screw it onto the body of the damper by hand. We're just going to thread it on there. Again, it overheated. I just realized I'm recording in 4K. I got 8% left on this battery. Crying out loud. It's always something with these GoPros. So, um, I've screwed it down by hand, right? I attached the shaft, the damper shaft, onto the upper piston. Now I'm going to torque it down and torquing this guy down to 28 Newton meters. All right? I'm using a crow's foot. And I don't know, it's gonna be a little bit tricky for me since I don't have too much of a solid base. And I need to record 25, 26. There we go. Perfect. Now we are torqued down. I'm gonna turn off the camera for a bit so it could cool off and finish the rest of this process the bleed process we got two portions left all right second half of the bleed uh, bleed process so <clears throat> 
attach the damper to the shaft body, that's secured. What I do to make, give myself a little bit more leeway, a little bit more room, is I take shipping tape basically, or any kind of tape really, and I cut two big pieces and I overlap one big piece and stick it, one large piece and stick it or glue it to the other large piece so they're stuck together. And then I take the, the adhesive portion that's left and I wrap it around the shock body. This allows me more reservoir so I could bleed without having to worry about constantly overflowing and making a huge mess basically, right? At the same time, there's no adhesive for the oil to get stuck to on the inside, right? So I took out the bleed screw, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly compress the shaft body and as you see there's oil there's air popping out more than i thought that's because i sort of screwed up before so i'm going to press it down it's going to come out all right and air just stopped coming out all right so now I'm just going to press it up and down. And this is what I'm saying. That it gives me, by creating a larger funnel, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility to compress the shaft all the way without making a massive mess all over the place. And I'm just going to keep on doing this until I see all those little bits of bubbles come out until there are no more bubbles whatsoever. Right? And I'm a stickler when it comes to bleeding shocks. Patience helps over here. It helps big time. Alright, let's stick it all up. Let's extend the shock all the way. That is fully extended, and let's bring them back down again to see if there's more bubbles in there. One little one. Let's extend them back out all the way. Let's bring them back down again. If you didn't have this funnel here, I would invent a tool to actually do that. This makes a huge, huge mess. This way I could leave it here longer and be a little bit more finicky with the bleed. Right. There's little, little pocket. We want to get all the air out of here. You really, in the rear shock, even in the front fork, but in the rear shock, you really want to get all the air out of there because the slightest air bubble will just turn it into a big foamy mess. That's all the way down compressed. Bring them all the way up. Now we're looking pretty good, actually. Now we're going to extend them all the way. Let's do it one more time since I'm very picky with this. Okay. 
Okay. Hopefully the camera doesn't overheat again. Extend it all the way. And we are extended all the way. So that's looking good. I see zero bubbles. Again, this is why it's important to have a strong magnetic driver. Let's make sure we are fully extended. Yes, we are. Let's make sure we keep it there. Now we're going to take the bleed screw and close the bleed hole. Don't go crazy tightening them down. That's plastic. It could strip very easily, right? So now the last portion, let's see if there's any air up here. And the way we are going to bleed this guy is on the top. There's a T-Torx 10 screw, right? Move my lenses here. Turn around this way. Now I have a, um, actually let's do this. We don't even need the oil in there anymore. Let me take this guy out of here. This guy, the rest of the oil out of here. Now I can take this tape off. Honestly, it seems crude, but it works like a charm. Look how much less of a mess I made. So, let's tighten this guy back down. Now there is a set depth for these pistons inside these canisters. And for this particular shock, it is 33 millimeters deep. So this is a tool from RockShock, never used it before, but it should make life easier sinking this guy down until I hit 33 millimeters basically, right? And what I'm gonna to do to make my life even easier, I'm gonna put some like maybe a couple of toothpicks in here so this way I can just push them down without passing the, uh, the line. But before I do that, actually let me do the toothpicks first, see if this even works. Oh yeah, that works out great, look at that. Ooh, that's beautiful. That is perfect, cool. This is going to work out super. So, there is a T10 screw up here. And what we're going to want to do is unscrew that screw, take it out. Okay, some oil is going to want to come out. Actually, let me get a towel. I'm always going to want to come out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the piston to bleed any air out of here. Air's already going on. Whatever air was in the shaft is already going to the top. All right? I can knock and see if there's anything stuck on the sides just in case, but it's going to want to escape. So then I'm going to take out this screw. All right. In fact, there's a replacement screw in the new kit. Why not use it? And just put a little bit of. Did they put the rubber seal on it? Yes, they did. So we're just going to put a little bit of dynamic grease onto the seal. It's your friend. Nothing too crazy. All right, and we will put this guy back on the head. Back on the head. All right, so now we're going to use this tool. Now you could use a caliper to do this, right? And you want to set your caliper to 31 millimeters. But this tool is already preset to that. And all I have to do is bring it to this line and having these toothpicks in there is going to allow me to bring it there a little bit easier without overshooting. And as I do that, as I press in now, oil, this is the shock's fully extended. Oil is going to want to come out and it's going to pull out any air out of the system. See oil streaming out, streaming out, streaming out, full stream of oil, full stream of oil. Once I hit that 31, bam, I'm there. Oh God, I'm trying all that. There we go. 
you are there. Oh, screw in for them, screw in. Tighten him down. Don't go too crazy. And we are bled. Our IFP is at the appropriate depth. All right. Let me make sure I set it to the 31. Uh, 33. Yep. 33 millimeters. And the shock is officially bled and ready for the last step or last two steps technically. All right. So now we're going to close up the canister or the piggyback basically all right just take out some of the oil that's in there make sure there's not too much of anything make sure that this guy the cap is cleaned off make sure there's no dirt on it or debris or anything i already changed the seal in this guy in the beginning of the process or closer to the beginning of the process now what we're going to do is put a little bit of grease on the seal all right just smooth them around like that okay now with this part up we're going to sink this guy into the canister just like that I'm going to put a little bit lower All right and then we're going to put in the circle up okay Right, and then we take a pick and we bring this guy, grab him by the hole, and bring him back up. So then we are going to, now that I just sunk him again, I should have probably thought of that first. There we go. Point him toward the outside to make your life easier. And we're gonna take our little Schrader valve tool and put in a new Schrader valve. All right, that guy is done. This will cover the hole at the end. Now, unlike Fox, who uh, might really want to consider following RockShox's lead, RockShox has an adapter that allows me to fill air inside the canister. Now, people think that these canisters need to be filled with nitrogen. They don't. You call up Fox, you call up Rock Shocks, air, nitrogen. Let's face it, there's what air is made out of 79% nitrogen, right? So uh, the extra 20%, 30, the extra 20% really isn't a 21% isn't going to have any effect whatsoever, right? It's extremely minimal limit of effect. Rock Shocks will tell you that absolutely no problem using air, so you do not need a nitrogen. But with Fox, you need a needle in that stupid pellet system they have, which I'm going to be doing a video on. Um, in order to fill up the canister with air if you want to do nitrogen go get everything you need for nitrogen that's a lot of expense for absolutely basically zero return for probably 99.9999 percent of the people out there so what we're going to do is install the adapter then we're going to screw on the shock pump for rock shocks you really or at least for these piggyback shocks you don't need that much pressure this one in particular for this setup 250 psi is all that's needed for inline shocks, those get high. They get up to 500 PSI, and I will be doing a video on an inline Fox, actually. So make sure this guy's screwed in tight, and then we are going to inflate him to 250 PSI. Right, there you are. And that's 250 PSI. Now we unscrew the adapter. Unscrew the whole thing. That air coming out isn't coming out from inside here. It's actually coming out from the hose in the pump, basically. Now you can test it. This should not sink in at all. And it's not going anywhere. Now, we take our 
plug for the Schrader valve. And we plug him in. <clears throat> Just like that. Don't go too crazy. Just hand tight, nothing too hard. And that is done. All right, so now we're on to the last step. So we have to put the air can back into the shock. What you're going to need is a little bit of dynamic grease and a little pillow pack of the 1550 air can uh, lube, basically, right? And we're going to be splitting that. This is a two ounce pack. One ounce goes into half of the air can, and another ounce goes into the top half of the air can, or at least bottom half of the air can and top half of the air can. What we're going to do first is put a little bit of dynamic grease, just a little bit on the seal over here. Don't go too crazy, rub it around. And this helps with moisture and it helps keep the seal nice and fresh. All right. Put a little bit of dynamic grease on this guy since I already wiped him. All right, there we go. Nothing, no reason to go too crazy. Okay, highly recommend wiping down the shock. And what we can do is put a little, eh, I'd already put, why not? Put a little bit of dynamic grease on the inside over here. And the actual seal on the inside, just in case from handling it so much in my case, because I did so much with this shock when it came to making a video out of it. Okay. So what we're going to do is take the pillow pack. Just wipe my hands, crack it open. Um, we're going to take half of it we're going to pour it inside the canister on the bottom half spin it around that's half move it around basically right then what we're going to do is insert the canister. All right, like an idiot, I totally forgot to put the countermeasure, the counterbalancer, counter spring in here. So you definitely want to put this guy in here. And then once we sink in a little bit, we are going to pour the remaining half on the inside up here. Okay, so we just filled it with oil at the bottom and on the top. And this guy is done. rolling around. And now for the pain in the ass part. Sometimes this could be a little bit stiff. We're going to have to do is squeeze it together and twist it on. There we go. Now we tighten it down. Now you could use a strap to tighten it. I don't I find you could over tighten and there's no need. And that's pretty much it. From this point on, you basically install them, fill them up with air. Don't forget to put in, if you got a rock shocks, the little uh, uh ring over here the marker ring and you are set to go you got a freshly serviced 200 hour service shock again your first time is always going to be the longest doing it by video obviously took a little bit longer than i thought it was going to take but uh yeah we are good to go all right hope you guys enjoyed it like subscribe uh place any comments if you feel like it if you would like to see other videos i plan on doing one of these for an inline fox uh dps uh pike forks uh and a few other shocks over time over the next few weeks if you guys have anything that uh if you guys liked it i know there's definitely improvement that needs to be made with the video this is my first instructional video so apologies for any uh inconsistencies or you know just in general any uh crappy footage and uh, we'll take it from there
Thank you very much.